Welcome back to the vlog and welcome here to Nankina. This is one of my favorite places to come by far. It's a 10% slope, 506 meters long, beautiful view out over the valley, down to the coast, about 20 miles down there. We're gonna be heading back to Garoka, just a half hour flight. We've been doing some shuttles this morning, getting a dental, a dental team into another place, a helicopter location, so we've been doing shuttles back and forth all morning. We're all done. I've got 293 kgs of coffee on board and heading back to Garoka at 12,000. All right, I've already done fuel caps, controls, our taws, turn Betty on for takeoff, switches and instruments are done, almost. We said we were 5,800, so 56 and 66. If we had to come back in, 66 and rotate at 56. Flaps are set, indicated, and verified. All right, um, we will be committed basically at the crest of the hill. Guy has his arm up, so we're good to go. All right, igniters, bypass. And lights, are now done. We just did our SAR call and high idle. Right, we're 5,000, it's 25 degrees out right now. 1330 for 1380. Mission condition flaps 20 fuel on harnesses. 1330 for 1380. Your speed's alive. There's 50. Hit the bounce, <laughs> bounce off. Put a little bit more ITT in there. We'll just climb out 85 initially. Really the, the whole thing just drops off below us so we can just go ahead and start pitching over, getting our speed up, getting our flaps out and climbing up from 5,500 to 12,000 just so we can get over these mountain ranges right behind me. A prop back to 2,000. And we'll bring our ITT right to 720 for a climb. All right, landing light off. Engine inlet back to normal and igniters are turned off. We'll climb out at 99 knots for the time being, just so we can get up there as quick as we can, because 99 knots is our best rate of climb. Morsby 6538, November Tango Echo departure. November Tango Echo, go ahead. November Tango Echo departed Nankina, time 2 niner. Tracking 251 on climb 1 2000. Garoka 57. November Tango Echo, Postman 1000, and tracking 511, Garoka 57. I'm sorry, reading your strength one. Departed Nankina time two niner, tracking two five one. I'll climb one two thousand. Estimating Garoka five seven. Number one single call, Ericsson H one zero zero eight. 1008, November Tango, Echo. Call on 88861. 88861, no contact, 5565. Next call 8861555, November Tango, Echo. So here's what my plan is, just because we just departed, and like I said, we've got mountain ranges all the way through here, all the way up to 12,000 feet, we've got a couple of gaps that we can get through right around 11,000. But we just had two other airplanes head out that way, an airplane and a helicopter, and they're saying right around 12,000 is what you need to get through. So I am just going to go basically down here until I'm at 12,000 or until I see a couple holes and then jet over to Garoka. If you guys want to fly this exact same flight on uh, X-Plane or Microsoft Flight Sim, um, I do have this one someone created Nankina for X-Plane, so you can get the patch for it and add it in. I'm not sure about Microsoft Flight Sim if it has it or not. I bet it does. I think it does. Uh, actually, no, I do it. It does. It doesn't look quite exactly right, but it is there. 
If you guys are wanting to fly that same flight, uh, head over to my Patreon page, details down below, and you can fly this exact same one. All right, looks like over here, there's gonna be enough space for me to be able to continue my climb. We're already at 11,000. Uh, that's where my gap is, is over in this area. So we're gonna go over that way, see if we can squeeze through someplace. If not, then we'll either have to go up or we'll have to go down to the end of the range, which I really don't want to. I think through the Nahe Gap right here, I think I can get through at 12,000. It looks like it, so we'll continue on. If not, then we'll just break off at last second. Keep climbing up. If you guys have a question that I you maybe um, ask me down below or on Instagram or something like that, and I haven't had a chance to get to you, you guys can check out replybank.com. Um, I'll have a link down below. You don't need an app or anything like that. You basically just go on there. You can ask me questions. And some of the proceeds will go towards some of these projects that I've been doing. One with like the lawnmower one out uh, with a solar panel. And then I'm going to be doing one at a school, another place here coming up really shortly. But um, it's a guaranteed way to get an answer back from me. I'll send you an actual personalized video to send it back. If you guys want to check out that. But one of my one of the questions that I've just recently got uh, this past week that I thought was good, uh, because I'm sure some of you might wonder the same reason, but it was, why do you hold the, uh, the power lever the way you do? Why don't you just hold it up here, you know? Because, you know, that's how they, every movie has it. Why do you hold it down like this and rotate and push off with your thumb? And the reason being is because I have so much more control over it if I hold like this. With this, you don't have, you're, you don't have like a, a fulcrum or anything like that to kind of rotate around. So it's just kind of, you can't make those super, super small adjustments. With this, you can put your pinky down here and then just push off with your thumb and just basically change your, your torque and your ITT just with the pressure of your thumb. Well, 12,300 looks like it will get me through here just fine. Once we get through here, then we'll take a little bit of a right-hand turn up towards Goroka. Once our speed's coming up to 130, and I'll start reducing my torque back down to 1250. And as long as our ITT is at 700 or below, it's at like 698 right now, and we're good. As I come through this gap right over top of the mountains, I quickly look at my wind direction and speed just to have an idea of what to expect. So I've got tailwinds right now, a 14 knot direct tailwind with 17 knots coming kind of quartering. So it's going to be smooth on this side of the mountain and then right when we get to the other side of it, more than likely, we'll start getting some of that kind of tumbling wind. As it hits the mountain, it'll just start swirling over top of it. It's usually not that bad through these, through these mountains, but it is good to know just if you are like scraping over top of mountains or if you have passengers that don't like to fly, it's good to know, so you can let them know, hey guys, it's going to be bumpy, these sections of the flight. Another one of the questions on Reply Bank was, um, I had mentioned in some of my other videos that I'm going back to the States in a year from now, in January of 21. Um, correction, 22, it's already 21. <laughs> Next year, to start helicopter training. And they were asking, like, what's the cost effectiveness from the Kodiak to the helicopter and really what is more beneficial for here in Papua New Guinea? So back in the 70s and 80s, um, tons and tons of these airstrips were built here in Papua New Guinea. And they were, and they were super effective back in the 80s because they didn't have any roads, they didn't have anything. Well, not that there's that many more roads right now. Um, but as far as how our missionaries are working, like it takes a couple of years really to build an airstrip like full time. So with a helipad, you can get in and you can build a helipad in a week, put it out the jungle and make it all really nice and be able to land there. Actually, probably in just a couple of days. So in that respect, helicopters, that's kind of where we're going. Um, as a mission is more helicopters because the missionaries are wanting to go in, they're wanting to get done with their work in, you know, less than 10 years, whereas back in the 80s, I think the mindset was we're going in for the next 20 years, so let's build an airstrip because it's cheaper. So, 
That's kind of where we're going um, with helicopters. Cost-effective wise, the helicopter is going to be, we're going to be going with the Robinson 66 and uh, it's going to be about $300 cheaper an hour than the Kodiak. And it can carry, I'm, I don't, I'm pulling numbers out here, but I'm thinking it's um, inside the cabin and whatnot. I don't know, you guys can leave a comment down below. I really don't want to even say because I'll probably just get flamed on saying something wrong. But I know that it can actually carry more um, sling loading stuff. So a lot of our flights are going to be sling load stuff. Um, so anyways, yeah, it's about $300 cheaper than what the Kodiak is right now. So what we're thinking is we're going to be doing a lot of positioning flights with the Kodiak to nearby airports and then do sling loads or, sh or shuttles and stuff with the helicopter. So that's kind of our thought process looking into the future with how missionaries are wanting to move into locations and not have to spend all the time and resources not only to build the runway but to actually upkeep it because it is a ton of upkeep and if you've watched any other videos it's a lot of work to have to cut airstrips and keep lawn mowers up and going and everything else especially when the missionary is not there and yes when i do go back to the states to do my training for helicopter i am still planning on doing videos um, of my helicopter training and I'm trying to save up enough videos um, in advance this year so that I can still at least put out one video a week um, of flying, depending on how much I can actually get over the next year. And I might actually have to go down to one video later on in the year to be able to maintain that for you guys so that I still am putting out content every week. Right, auto pilot off. Up forward. I'll just help me slow down and bring my torque on back to 450. Up and harness is done. There's 140 knots. We'll throw our engine in at the bypass. Basically, where your air intake is, it has a little bypass. So in case you suck a bird into it, it just spits it out the bottom of the aircraft and not into your turbine engine. Kroger Tower, November Tango Echo, right base three five right. Kroger Tango Echo, runway three five right, clear to land. Clear to land three five right, November Tango Echo. All right, I'm a little high, so I'm going to go ahead and bring my torque all the way back. Pitch up. You can slow down. There's 120, 20 degrees of flaps. 108, there's full flaps. Checklist is complete. And that one's complete as well. If you guys want one of these box, check out my website uh, here in a couple months. I'll have them available for you. They're a really, really handy tool for keeping your eyes up and out and so you don't forget things that are critical for landing. said we'll come in today at 70 knots for our VREF. Five hundred. Looks like we'll have five knot tailwind. Ready my turn now and slow into seventy. All right, so I pitch for my airspeed, power for altitude. So if I want to go slower, I got to pitch up. If I want to go down, I got to pull my power out. We want 70 knots coming in, which is what we got now. All right, we're continuing. I'm trying to get to the solution. Final. That's a little downdrafts. So.
Well, that is my only flight for the day. So thanks for joining along. Definitely sure to appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up if you did like it. And like I said, if you want to fly that same flight on uh, Microsoft Flight Sim or X-Plane, maybe 11, um, I've got some free download liveries uh, for the same paint scheme as this plane for X-Plane as well as Microsoft Flight Sim for their caravan. Looks like the helicopter just got back. Well, but he can't, he also left from the same place I did, but he's a little bit slower than I am. And shut down, we're gonna write down my landing fuel. As well as my hobs time. Drop our blowers, all of our lights. Box bus, generator and alternator. Cut off. Feather. I'm just watching my ITT to make sure that it's continuing to go all the way down to 200 and then just drop off. That way I don't have to uh, re-hit my starter to keep the tournament going. Thanks again, guys. Have a great one.